intermediate insulin, generic name NPH, trade name Humulin N or Novolin N. So when we talk about intermediate, you already know that this is going to be a little bit longer acting than rapid, obviously, and then regular, okay? So we have rapid, regular, now we're going to talk intermediate acting insulin. What that really means is it just means it's going to have a little bit longer onset time, so it's going to take a little bit longer to start working, and then it's going to have a longer peak time, okay? And the peak time is when it reaches its max effect, and then it's actually going to stay in the system longer. So indications for this, are again, are hyperglycemia, diabetic 1 and 2, diabetic ketoacidosis, and insulin, as we know, what it does is it stimulates the uptake of glucose into the muscles and fat cells, and it inhibits glucose production in the liver and it prevents a breakdown of fats and proteins so that our bodies, our cells can use glucose to create energy rather than having to break down fats and protein. You know, in like the case like DKA, our body isn't using glucose to create energy. Instead, it's breaking down fats and creating these fatty acids. And that's why we have the acid portion of DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. We break down these fats and that creates the acidic state in our body. So insulin, what it allows us to do is it allows us to get that glucose into the cell to prevent this sort of breakdown of the fats and then the the buildup of the fatty acids. So the route that we administer uh, intermediate acting insulin, or NPH, is subcutaneous, okay? We want to give it in the sub-Q fat tissue. And the onset time for NPH, okay, the onset time for intermediate acting insulin is 1 to 2 hours. Peak time is 4 to 12 hours, so a much longer peak time. And the duration is 18 to 24 hours. So NPH insulin can be referred to as like a basal dose of insulin. What basal means is it's kind of a background dose of insulin that kind of works as like this background dose of insulin that kind of sets there in the body for a day and kind of works throughout the day. So we have the basal dose. So basal really means it's background dose. It sits there. It does its job. And then we also have bolus dose of insulin. So bolus would be like the regular, the rapid that we're going to give to kind of treat blood sugars immediately where basal dose is really like we will take it in the morning and it's kind of a background dose that sits in the bloodstream. So that's the difference between basal and bolus. You can mix NPH insulin or intermediate acting insulin with regular insulin. When you do that, you want to drop your regular insulin first and then drop your NPH. The best way to remember that, the best thing to think about with that is clear before cloudy. Your regular insulin is going to have a clear tint to it where your NPH is going to have kind of a cloudy tint to it. So you always want to drop your clear before your cloudy. A lot of times these are going to come in pins, and so you won't necessarily even need to mix in the hospital anymore, but you are going to be tested on this, that you want to drop the clear before the cloudy, regular before the NPH. So there are some different considerations with NPH. First of all, thinking about it as like this basal dose that has a much longer uh, duration time, and then the fact that you can mix NPH with regular. All right, so those are the big things about intermediate acting insulin. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to nrsng.com slash 50 meds. That's nrsng.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at nrsng.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.